St. Louis community, radioactive waste testing harm, harmed in that community. St. Louis community still grappling with the effects of toxic waste dumping from over 60 years ago. The community now years later is asking what will be done to undo the damage. Radioactive waste was dumped years ago. Feds didn't protect the community. We've heard that before. You live near Coldwater Creek in St. Louis, Missouri, you have a high chance of getting cancer. Federal Agency for Toxic Substances and Disease Registry has found that people who played in Coldwater Creek or just live nearby may have higher risks for cancers of the lungs, bones, or leukemia. News Radio 1120 KMOX with the details. Here's why, eight decades after Malincroft Chemical Works first began the dangerous task of processing uranium at a sprawling complex near downtown St. Louis, federal government is still removing soil from a creek and cleaning up a landfill, nuclear contamination sites. The AP filling in the reporting. Last year, grade school closed amid worries that contamination from the creek got onto the playground and inside the building. People have felt the effects of the toxic dumping and have suffered because of it. The government paid out millions to former Malincrot workers with cancer or their survivors. Many people with rare cancers who grew up near the waste sites believe their illnesses too are connected to radiation exposure. Huffington Post, most affected area. One affected area was a, well, this is different, not predominantly black public housing complex called Pruitt Igo. Throughout the 1950s and 60s, when the army was conducting various secret tests related to the creation of the atomic bomb, residents thought the zinc cadmium sulfide sprayed into their community was mist or smoke from chimneys. Now residents want answers and change. Why were black lives deemed disposable? Is St. Louis in America? The community is now calling for an expansion of the Radiation Exposure Compensation Act. That act is meant to facilitate health insurance and financial resources to individuals who develop certain illnesses and cancers, who lived and worked downwind of testing sites. What occurred and is still occurring, folks, this is still going on. In St. Louis, it's evidence that not enough is done to track how black and brown communities experience environmental racism. And when they do clean it up, you might want to follow the money. First, you contaminate and kill people through their own environments, no fault of their own. And then somebody gets rich off the cleanup too, the American way. Rivana, unpack it for us. I'm totally in favor of what the victims are fighting for, which is expanding the uh, Compensation Act so that they can be, you know, and you'll never be able to undo the damage that is done. There's this myth, this legal myth of making someone whole through providing them, well, awarding them damages, but you can never make someone whole again. People have lost their lives because of these cancers they've developed because of these uh, uh, environmental factors, these intentionally discharged <laughs> toxins into their uh, communities chosen specifically because they are uh, black and brown working class communities because these companies think that it's unlikely that the residents of these communities are going to sue them. They think that they're unlikely to have the resources to do it. Lawyers are unlikely to get interested in a case like this that's not going to bring them a lot of money. So they intentionally choose these neighborhoods. And I think that it's important to ensure that they get compensation, but it's also important to ensure things like this don't ever happen again, which is why I think it's important for climate activists to focus on the devastating impact that allowing particularly Republicans, but also Democrats who are captured by corporate interests to dismantle the, the truly revolutionary legislation we do already have in our environmental protections, in uh, the Air and Water Act uh, and, and many others. So it, it, we've got to focus on prevention as well as compensating the victims because no one should have to suffer through you know these heinous diseases, these cancers that are being 
forced on them just by virtue of them being black, brown, poor, uh, you know, and, and any other you know, factor that a company might decide means that you're probably not going to sue them. And it's just devastating to me because by the time the dust settles, literally, and you realize that lives have been taken, people are infertile, kids can't learn, brains aren't functioning, someone has this cancer or this, you know, issue or nerve damage, unpacking it. And getting people to do the right thing is so horrible. We know that people do not have a tendency. Government doesn't automatically get it right and do the right thing. In fact, they push back, okay? Maybe it's the NFL. You've got concussions. And we all know the hit is like a car crash, but you want to pretend that I don't qualify for the funds that are set aside. This is what people do. And it is just devastating, praying that these communities get what they deserve. 